Let's have a look at setting up an ILS approach using the G1000NXI. We're flying southbound towards Easton Airport. The autopilot has us going direct to the airport at 3,000 feet. We've been told by ATC to turn left heading 220, vectors for the ILS runway 4 at Easton. We'll move the heading bug to 220 and then activate heading mode by hitting HDG. Now let's have a look at the approach plate while we load the procedure. We'll hit PROC, then ENTER to select approach. The ILS-4 is already highlighted, so we'll hit ENTER. We were told to expect vectors, so we'll hit ENTER for that. We can set our minimums. The decision altitude for the ILS for all category aircraft is 273 feet. We'll hit ENTER, then ENTER again to activate the approach. Now we get a caveat that because this is a ground-based ILS approach, our use of the GPS is for advisory purposes only. It's not the primary navigation. Notice on the HSI on the left that because we're tracking the GPS, the course lines and arrows are pink. After we hit enter to activate the approach, the G1000 will automatically switch us from tracking the GPS to tracking the ILS. Now that we're tracking the Navid or on the raw data, as they say, the needles turn green. This is an easy check ride fail where someone flies a perfect ILS approach, but they did it on the pink needles, which were supposed to be advisory only. Our unit switches us automatically. It also does us the added favor of putting the ILS frequency active on our NAV1, and we can see the identifier shown there, IFGH. Okay, as part of our brief, we see that the missed approach requires us to intercept the 283 radial off the ATRVOR, which has a frequency of 112.6. Let's set that up into our NAV2. We'll hit the NAV knob to move down to NAV2, dial in the frequency, and then swap it to active. And we can confirm the identifier, ATR. Now the HSI is currently showing the NAV1, which is the localizer for the approach. We'd like to set up NAV2, so we'd hit the CDI soft key down here to move to NAV2. And we want to set the 283 radial. We'll go to the inner course knob and twist that until CRS indicates 283. Now, the GPS will guide us along the full MIST procedure, but we should have the raw data loaded in as backup too. We'll hit the CDI soft key two more times, and we're back to tracking the localizer on NAV1. So approach has us on a right downwind for the approach, and it'll be giving us vectors to turn to intercept. As we get closer to RICME, they'll give us a right turn to 310, which we can just dial in with the heading knob since we're already on heading mode. As we approach the localizer course, we'll get our clearance, told to turn right heading 010, maintain 2000 until intercepting. So we'll again twist the heading knob, this time to 010, and what we can do now is arm approach mode. We'll hit APR down here. Let's have a look at our autopilot status bar. Green indicates what's active. Heading mode is active, which is turning us to 010. That teal or turquoise indicates what's armed. Loc mode shows that the autopilot will capture the localizer once it comes alive on the HSI. Altitude mode is active and is holding us at 2,000 feet. GS in teal shows that glide slope mode is armed. When the glide slope, the yellow diamond, which is currently above the scale, comes down to center, the autopilot will capture it and follow it down. So now see that as the localizer needle comes alive, the autopilot goes into loc mode and it'll now capture the localizer. As we continue inbound, we'll start to pick up the glide slope and the yellow diamond will fall towards center. As it does, we can configure the aircraft for descent and the autopilot will go into glide slope capture mode. So now both the lateral and vertical guidance are being handled by the autopilot. As we reach short final, we come up on our decision altitude at 273 feet. We can see the runway, but let's execute a missed approach anyways. We'll need to disengage the autopilot. The green AP will blink. We'll go full power, start our climb, bring the flaps up once we have a positive rate, announce our missed approach and expect a handoff to the approach controller and start flying our mist as we briefed it. 
It involves a climb on a 041 heading to 2000, and then intercepting the radial we programmed in before. We're wings level flying 041, and we're pitched for the climb. Let's re-engage the autopilot. Engaging autopilot. The green AP comes back on top. It's holding us in pitch mode, but it's still tracking the localizer. We'll want to switch to the GPS for the pink needles. First, we need to bring the GPS up to speed. It thinks by default that we landed, so it suspended the approach at the runway. We'll unsuspend the approach by hitting the SUSP soft key. And we'll go back to the pink needles by hitting the CDI soft key twice, cycling through nav 1 and nav 2 to get to the GPS tracking. Now we're ready for the autopilot to track the nav again, so we'll hit nav. We're pitched for a good climb rate, so we can hit VS to go to vertical speed mode. It'll hold our current climb rate of 1,600 feet per minute. There's no need to change our altitude bug since we're climbing to 2,000 feet. Over on the MFD, we see the rest of the MIS procedure and the hold. It's computed an intercept point where we'll pick up that 2A3 radial off the ATR VOR. From that point, we'll make a right turn in towards the holding fixer eat, where we'll make a direct entry into the hold. It's really that simple now, as the autopilot will fly the inbound and outbound leg in the two turns. Again, we have the VOR on nav 2 as backup if we need it, but we'll otherwise hold here with the help of the autopilot until instructed otherwise. Did you like this video? You're going to love Flight Insight IFR Ground School. Hours and hours of videos just like this, as well as hundreds of practice test questions based on the real thing with instructor feedback. Head on over to flight-insight.com slash IFR right now.